Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. I want to talk about triads today, the power of three. Watercolor has this, you can do it in watercolor or oil, but I obviously I think it's better in watercolor. But what you do is you use three colors to create a mass instead of one, which is much more powerful. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show a demo in a minute, but here's my first, I call it the dark triad. It's burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson. You can see them there. I threw in right here is a little bit of cerulean blue because I needed to compare the value. Uh, later I'll explain why. I throw that in the nose and some other places. But that's my first dark triad. I'm going to mix up those three colors, but I don't mix them together. I leave them apart on the palette. I'm going to apply them wet into wet on the paper. So that's my dark triad. I put in my dark shapes first. The next is my medium triad. My medium triad is uh, ultramarine blue again, alizarin crimson, and this is, oh boy, how did I just forget that? It's a really aurelian, yeah, but any darker yellow will probably do. One thing that you probably noticed here in a triad is you generally have a red, a yellow, and a blue. It's really important to have those primary colors. It doesn't mean you have to use the brightest of colors, but it means when you're creating a triad, you're kind of um, creating the actual prism of light on the, on the paper by using three primary colors. Because remember in nature, and, the, and we know this from watching a prism, when light comes through a prism, it fracks, fracks? It breaks up into a rainbow. So we're recreating that rainbow, red, yellow, blue. All right, here's the last triad. I tend to use this as my special, my, my, the triad I use the most for uh, lights. It's cerulean blue, Naples yellow, and alizarin crimson. Now you probably noticed here, I'm not using a tremendous amount of colors uh, in this one, this one, or this one. The colors tend to repeat. And that's really important because it makes your painting look cohesive. There's no green in this painting, in other words. I could have used green in one of my triads, but it if you throw it in just arbitrarily, it sort of makes no sense. It's kind of like ingredients for uh, a recipe. Oh, let's say, <laughs> let's say you were making Christmas cookies and at the last minute you, you decided to put in some garlic. Garlic is fine on its own, but it doesn't make any sense combined with the other ingredients you've already put in. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show right here is just a mark of a very thick indigo. Now, what I do with that is I'm not doing triad work there. I need that to be my darkest of all darks because at the very end, I'm gonna go back into the painting and put in my darkest darks. Now, let's look at it. If you've hung in this long, I'm, I'm kind of amazed, but it will really help your ability to see paintings. So see my dark triad? is darker than my medium triad, which is darker than my light triad. And now look at how that black mark, that indigo just sticks out. It's way, way darker. So that's gonna give me my complete value range from whitest whites, because I do leave some of the paper white, I'm, that's my white, and the darkest dark, which is that indigo. So. You can really play with triads. You'll find some that you like better than others. And now we're gonna to go to a demo. And, and I hope that's helpful to you. Be generous with paint too. Load up your brush. All right, let's get started. Today we're gonna to take a little bit of time to look at triads. This can be used in either watercolor or in oil painting. Uh, you see it a lot in, you see it in great artists work all the time. But in watercolor, it is just particularly fluid and enjoyable to do. So I'm going to describe, or, or you're going to see in, in the video in a minute, kind of how these triads work and how you plug them in. But first I wanted to show you where the, the demo ends up. I have these different clusters of colors. This is the painting that I'm going to do. It's a 12 by 12, and I'm only going to do the dog right now. I'll deal with the, the other parts later. So let's look at the first dark triad. I like to get my darks in first. So, sorry, it's upside down, that, that's a D. So it's ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a burnt sienna. And there's also just one dab there of cerulean blue, because if I squint my eyes, I can see that that's not quite as dark, 
I just need to use that as an accent and, and or what I call a color spot of value. I'm going to use that later. Now what I do is I make these puddles on my palette of these three different colors, but I don't mix them together. If you mix them together, they'll neutralize because you've got a red, a yellow, and a blue. That will always neutralize. So here's a close-up of the triad, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you how, how this happens. You can see the individual colors there, but they've been laid in wet next to wet on dry paper. So there's my mass of dark. And now we're going to go on to the mediums. After I get my darks put in, this is my medium triad. This is ultramarine blue again, aurelian, and you could use any darker yellow. A yellow ochre would probably work here as well, or Hansa yellow medium would work. And again, alizarin crimson. So there's a consistency here. I'm going to try to keep using the same ingredients over and over again. That'll make the painting look more cohesive. Now let's take a look up a uh, close-up of the dog's face. That's where my darker triad went in. And you can see where it's neutralized into gray in a few places. And that's okay, because I don't always want spots of color. I need some neutrals. All right, my third triad is cerulean blue, alizarin crimson again, and some Naples yellow. And that gives me my light triad. And that's what's in that circle. So, you can see it's starting to neutralize there, but again, I've made different puddles on my palette, and I'm going to let them join on the paper. Now, they're, 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 these aren't thick. These are pretty much tints at this point, because, um, because I need that in order to preserve the light, uh, or the, yeah, the lightness. But, but I always say, don't use water to get you to the different colors that you want to get to. If you use tints to get to the color that you want, you know, a lighter color rather than mixing for it, you're going to have a very washed out looking painting that looks like it's been in the laundry and the dryer, like an old pair of jeans that now has no color in it anymore. And there's, it, it, you're just fighting a losing battle. So as much as you can, be generous with paint. It's only paint. And use it. All right, the first thing that I do, and this is this demo is way speeded up, but um, what I do first is I don't use any masking fluid because I, I, don't, I don't handle it well. I'm very clumsy. So instead what I do is I put some Naples yellow in just to remind myself that I don't want to drive over these spots. These are going to be my white spots. Now I'm mixing the tri that first dark triad on the palette. Remember, that's ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and some burnt sienna. Now, I'm applying it here. It's kind of hard to see, but what I'm doing is I'm putting down the first the red. Then, you see the blue comes in right next to it, and here comes the burnt sienna, and I'm letting it join. I'm not making it join. I'm not using a lot of strokes. I'm letting the wet paint go toward each other. If you put watercolor wet paint next to another patch of watercolor wet paint, it 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 will uh, it will join up it will gel so that's what's happening there so there are all my darks put in now i'm thinking okay i need to make my medium triad there's my medium triad which was aurelian alizarin crimson and again ultramarine blue so i've got those mixed up on my palette and now i'm going to put them where i see medium values and i'm not driving over my whites i'm being careful of that because remember i put that naples yellow in there to, to hold that place. I've gone to a slightly smaller brush because I want to I want to control the water. That's a big part of watercolor, which you probably know is controlling the water. See, now, now things have neutralized a little bit. That's where I've gotten some of that gray, and that's okay. One of the reasons that that, that gray will really work well, too, is because it's made up of colors that I'm already mixing on the palette. Instead of grabbing a Payne's gray or a gray from a tube, it really helps to mix it yourself. And remember, any yellow, blue, and yellow, blue, and red is going to neutralize into a gray. And you can decide how much color you want in that gray by pushing it toward a redder gray if you want to, or pushing it toward a bluer gray if you want to. All right, things are looking pretty okay. And now I, what happens to me usually at this point is I'm realizing, wow, that, that, all that's left is a little bit of lights. So I'm working on my, this is my light triad coming in now. This is cerulean blue, Naples yellow, and some alizarin crimson, but more of a tint really than anything else. 
but we'll yeah but if you go back you can see a close-up of where they gelled together now the one of the very last things I do is what I call color spots of value these are things that I see I saw some cerulean blue I I mean my mind's eye saw it and I wanted it there so I put some thick cerulean blue on my brush and put in some spots, color spots of value. And the other thing that I did is, I think any time now I'm gonna make that indigo. Yeah, that dark little bit of indigo goes in. That's my darkest of all the darks. And I just find the shapes that I can find that are uh, that dark shape. I'm not painting the thing, I'm not painting the dog. I'm just painting the shapes. I look at the shape, I say, which are my dark shapes? What three colors can I use to fill in the dark shapes? What three colors can I use to fill in the medium shapes? What three colors can I use to fill in the light shapes? And that's how I work. If I do it successfully and follow that recipe, then I, when I stand back, there should be a dog. And it won't look flat. It should look round. You, you know, I mean, it should, should look like it was um, integrated into the piece. Well, it's not really integrated into the piece yet because I have a lot more painting to do. I've got decisions to make about about the chair and the rest. But what I, but uh, so far it stands up pretty good. Uh, I'm going to really push the warms, I think, in the front because the dog is fairly dark and I want the emphasis to be on the dog. So I think I'm going to make the front that chair quite warm in terms of going toward the spectrum of the light side of the color wheel but I haven't decided that and I might use a markup or maybe my own brain I'll I'll, uh, I'll decide that's unusual for me usually when I start a painting I know exactly where I'm going to begin and end but in this case I scaled up I usually paint in an 8 by 8 and this was a 12 by 12 so that amount of uh, of work and ground to cover didn't allow me to finish. Usually I finish in one, one go. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value. That's what we did there with the triads. We masked for the value. We masked for the darks. We masked for the mediums. We masked, meaning created masks for the lights. So uh, what I say, um, remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value. Oh, and mix for color. And then you've got to mix your colors so you can get those triads going. All right, um, please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.